Hello everyone and welcome to the Busy Platform Engineer's Guide to API Gateways. I'll introduce myself in just a moment, but I always like to start my talks with a high level key takeaways, TLDR. I'm going to talk about API gateways and how choosing or migrating your current API gateway is a type one decision. Very important, hard to reverse, but if you get it right, it pays dividends. I'm going to be arguing for treating API gateways as a product thinking about developer and operator experience, and focusing on the workflows and tooling interoperability when choosing your API gateway. I'm Daniel Bryant. I run the DevRel team at Ambassador Labs currently. My background is Java development, all the way through to architecture, ops. I built a few platforms on Mesos, on Kubernetes, had a few wins, had a few losses, if I'm being honest. And I like to share that knowledge with everyone. I like to share through writing, through talking, through um, books. And I've written a book that's probably most relevant to this talk recently with my buddies, Matt and Jim from Morgan Stanley, around mastering API architecture. I've long worked on API management systems, built several API management systems. And now I'm working with the Emissary Ingress team. So it's an open source CNCF gateway that we at Ambassador Labs donated uh, a few years back now. And we've also got a commercial offering on top. Now, I'm not going to talk too much about the commercial offering today. I am going to use Emissary Ingress as my example as I talk about the API gateways going through because it's open source and because it's the one I've got the most experience on. But just a heads up, own my bias right. I do work on these projects quite a lot day to day. So previously at PlatformCon last year, I talked about from Kubernetes to PaaS to what is next. I talked about golden paths and the need for self-service and developer experience and understanding the build versus buy decisions that lead to building a cohesive and coherent platform. I talked about minimizing cognitive load for developers. Definitely in my journey to the cloud, suddenly the amount of things I had to learn was just overwhelming. And API gateway and cloud native comms in general, particularly if you're moving to things like Kubernetes, which I do a lot these days, uh, it can be quite overwhelming for developers. So we need to help them understand what they're working with. I also argue that the CNCF is a fantastic foundation of tools, projects, platforms, technologies, and which we can use to build our platforms on top. So I'm going to lean into some of the technologies within CNCF uh, today as well. A key slide from that talk was I talk, shared about what did I learn when building several of these platforms, either as a consultant or actually someone in-house when I was working um, as a developer, as a developer lead. And I learned that you need to treat platforms as a product. The most successful uh, platforms I built, we actually staffed it and resourced it appropriately as a natural product. I learned you cannot have good developer experience without good user experience, and you need to focus on these workflows and the tooling interoperability. Now, I'm going to relate these three things I talked about last year, and the presentation's online, so you can go back and look at that. But I'm going to relate these three things to choosing and installing and using an API gateway in your technology stack. And I'm going to assume you're kind of moving to the cloud, and I'm going to assume you're kind of maybe on Kubernetes as well, just because that's the most common platform I work with these days. But you know, you could probably swap out Kubernetes for some other platform uh, with minimal differences, hopefully. So treating an API gateway as a product, uh, what I'm going to say is take care when lifting and shifting. I've seen quite a few folks when I was consulting, and I see it now in Ambassador Labs. A lot of folks just think they can take their old gateway, be it a commercial gateway, open source, something they built themselves, and simply lift it from like in-house tin or colos into the cloud. And it nearly always ends up being a replatform, which is a lift, tinker, and shift, as Amazon talk about. And I've linked off to the Amazon doc there. You always end up sort of duct tape, bailer wire, hacking things together, right? Because the, the, how the API gateway worked pre-cloud is never quite the same as in the cloud, particularly if you're going to something like Kubernetes. Recognize that products have users and personas. And if you are migrating that lift and shift, it's a good time to pause and say, hey, when we set up the API gateway, are our personas now different? Do we have a more clearly defined developer persona, more clearly defined SRE persona, ops persona, platform engineer persona, whatever is the case in your organization, recognize it and find out their requirements and build and choose the API gateway as appropriate. User research is invaluable. Talked a lot about that in my previous talk, but really understanding the needs of your users is key. And do understand where the API gateway fits in in the bigger solution. Now, if you want to sort of look deeper dive into API technologies, I've talked about this a bunch. Uh, you can actually go to the GoTo uh, YouTube site and check out a talk I did about two or three years ago now around the past, present, and future of API gateways. But I'm going to do a whistle stop tour today of where I think the API gateway sits in the cloud native communication stack. I'm going to use Kubernetes as that sort of baseline here, but I'm going to walk through the complexity of this cloud native stack just to get you thinking really that, oh yes, there's a lot of stakeholders involved here and we really need to think, think about how we're going to integrate the API gateway and use the API gateway as developers in particular on a daily basis, right? <laughs> 
So if you imagine I've got this like traffic flowing from left to right, I've got an API gateway kind of the edge of my system, right? Typically operations and developers kind of share like the workload there, right? I've, I've primarily colored it green to indicate it's mainly a dev, dev thing. Ops tend to stand up the API gateways, but we as developers use the API gateway by exposing routes and tweaking config quite a lot. But the API gateway sits nicely at the edge of your cluster, the edge of your systems, exposing um, the backend services to users. You're probably going to have some form of CDN up front, right? Particularly if you're a big shop, you're probably going to have Akamai, Cloudflare, Cloud Shield, some of those kind of things. You're also maybe going to have a service mesh in the mix. You can have something like CNI, Container Native Interface, or Cloud Native Interface, sorry. Uh, things like Calico, uh, Cilium, Weave, all these kind of things, and probably building on the cloud. So you're going to have some kind of software defined networking. Maybe some Terraform to define, define your virtual private clouds, VPCs, link up all the network and all that kind of good stuff. And the right of the diagram tends to be owned by the ops persona. So you need to think about them when you're choosing the tools here, right? Taking a, a sort of step back, if we look at the OSI networking stack, like layer one to three kind of runs across the whole gamut here, definitely at the software defined networking layer, but even things like um, certain attacks in the CDN space are layer three based. To the left of the diagram, we definitely focus on like layer seven. So again, HTTP DDoS attacks at the CDN layer, but you're also going to be using, say, HTTP metadata, going to be like putting headers in to um, authenticate users or to add jots or metadata into that so you can pass it down through to your other services. So developers need to be kind of layer seven aware, HTTP aware, right, for, for use in their applications. Building on top of that security, so you're probably going to have like a web application firewall stopping those DDoS attacks up front. You, as a developer, going to be thinking a bit more about the application illities, so like authentication, authorization for security, rate limiting for reliability, and caching for scalability, all those kind of things. But we as developers need to be able to understand and use that within the context of the API gateway. You might have some policy in the mix, defining interactions and tensions in the console a world from HashiCore, some policy from workloads, things like open policy agent in the mix, and then your network access control list and your security groups when you go down towards um, the SDN layer. Lots of stuff around security alone, right? We haven't even talked about observability, and that's for another day. There's quite a few different use cases you need to understand where your API gateway sits within those. Two uh, very common use cases and, and tools and platforms I'm working with these days are things like API management, APIM, and the internal dev portal. And these tend to be more developer focused and they span over the API gateway and the service mesh. So you really got to think about how your developers are going to be working with the API gateway. If you're thinking, wow, this is a lot, that's kind of the point of the slide. I wanted to actually like, a bit of shock and awe, right? Uh, you need to think very carefully. It's a type one decision about how you're building, how you're integrating your API gateway into your cloud native stack. Shameless plug, but I am really bullish, really positive on Envoy Proxy. I've worked with, like, with the project and the community for many years. Fantastic bit of technology. Many of the, uh, the sort of common cloud native uh, proxy. Uh, Service meshes and API gateways are built on Envoy Proxy. There's a push now towards uh, Envoy Gateway, which is a project of Ambassador Labs, Tetra, VMware, uh, Fidelity, a whole bunch of folks. Matt Klein's you know, leading this. He was the creator of Envoy. We're working on more of a north-south use case, a CNCF open source use case for supporting that um, API management or um, API gateways within the Envoy Proxy project. So if you want to get more involved with that, I think Envoy Proxy is a fantastic product project to build on top of, and, and hence we have that in Basta Labs. I want to move on now to talk about you can't have good developer experience without good user experience. And this really comes down to understanding uh, the approach and defaults for your platform. So Kubernetes space, you want to use like things like uh, custom resource definitions, custom resources. You want to make the way you configure the gateway uh, GitOps friendly for storing your config and version control and applying it to your cluster. You might be CLI, API driven, you might be UI driven as well, whatever works for you, really recognize the um, defaults your platform and your API gateway needs to embrace. Tailor the experience to personas, mentioned those in the previous slide, right? Think about developers, think about the operators and the platform folks. Key platform engineering tenet, right, is on-ramps and self-service. Make it easy to get started and then make it easy to keep doing your thing day in, day out. Self-service is the win. Got to give a shout out to the Humanitech folks here and the Sintaso folks, uh, the whole bunch of folks, and Nesto, and, uh, Paula, Casper, Matthew, I talked to on the podcast last year. If you want to know more about these things, like self-service, the importance of it, check out their podcast. I learned a bunch from those folks. And just to ram at home, like, I'm a massive like uh, you know, Star Wars fan, right? Uh, thinking about self-service, this really is the way. 
platform engineering, you know, one of the core tenants of me, and, and it doesn't, uh, it's no different with the API gateway. You really need to think about making the API gateway self-service for all the core personas you're working with. As an example with MSRE Ingress, we've really thought hard about custom resources. The project's several years old now, it's evolved through some other projects, but you can configure your routing as a developer, and we call it mapping, uh, very simply, and you'll recognize this if you've worked on any kind of proxies or ingresses, from like front-end URL path to back-end service. You can do things like canary waiting, for example, and you can do like different redirects, all these kind of things. There's a bunch of things you can do as a developer, you're gonna be doing day out, day in, day out as you release your services. You're also going to be doing some initial config, right? They're setting up the listeners, the ports, the hosts, the TLS certs, the SNI, and things like authentication. Now, what we've really thought about as this, you know, as a community, as we've built the MSRE Ingress project, all the communities come together and recognize, hey, this on the left is kind of developer focused, and this on the right is kind of operator focused, right? And now we've got a nice separation of concerns there. And we can apply more guardrails. If you're using MSRE Ingress, you know, in your systems, you can do more checks perhaps on the things that are going to have a wide ranging impact versus the mappings and the other things that are changing day in, day out. You definitely run them through CI and CD, but perhaps, you know, you've got less guardrails so you can let the developers move at speed. But we're really respecting the Kubernetes native way of doing things, self-service for sure, you can just commit these um, config files to your Git repo, but we're thinking about the different personas involved in the API gateway. Finally, focusing on workflows and tooling interoperability. Netflix, fantastic blog post around full cycle development, saying that platform team are force enablers, right? You create the API gateway, you, you build it, developers are using it day in, day out. Fantastic uh, blog post by Gala Navarro talking about how to build a platform uh, for 1500 engineers. And he talked about the balance of standardization and autonomy. And I've seen this on some example I worked on a few years ago with Emissary Ingress and Linkerd. So we did a, it was a CNCF webinar, myself and my buddy Jason and Itai uh, joined us as well. We talked about two CNCF projects, Emissary Ingress for the API gateway, Linkerd for the service mesh. Both use the Kubernetes resource model. So things like custom resources, controllers, best practices in the Kubernetes world. And it was a one line integration to get these two projects working. And not only that, and that's the, the one line, but it was very similar configuration for defining your uh, entry point, your API gateway, and then defining the service routing within the actual um, microservices system as well. So the two projects, two CNCF projects worked really well together. In conclusion, now, I only have 15 minutes, right? So I can't possibly talk about all the API gateways out there. And clearly I've got bias as well, but I'm gonna shout out the Learn Kates folks and you can check out the link here. They've got a whole bunch of API gateways, primarily focused in the Kubernetes space and they weigh them up and they sort of get, teach you about the different things you need to think about, like what protocols do you need to support? Uh, what security do you need? And they've gone through and evaluated all these API gateways. So check this out, a fantastic resource. Hat tip to the Learn Kates folks and Daniele who runs that. Um, this is a fantastic resource if you wanna build on what you've learned today and, and explore what API gateway works Works best for you. I'll wrap up by saying choosing or migrating an API gateway is a type one decision. It's tricky to reverse, but if you get it right, it adds a lot of value to your uh, users, your system. You need to I think, identify and think about personas and requirements. Clear ownership is needed for the platform and for the API gateway too. Treat API gateways as a product. Integration within the wide native cloud native communication stack is key there. And you want to be building on firm foundations. My bias is Envoy proxy, right? But any, you know, any good technology uh, can be substituted in there as well. But I'm a big fan of Envoy. Think about developer and operator experience. Self-service is really, really important. Optimize for that over all things, I think, in some ways. Because day in, day out, you want your developers to be using the platform, using the API gateway you're creating. Focus on the workflows and tooling interoperability, really, really important in the bigger scheme of things as well. That's it. Thank you very much for your time. Appreciate uh, all, all the attention. You can find me on the Ambassador Lab Slack, on the interwebs at Daniel Bryant UK, most places, and there's a few resources there for you to read too. Thanks a lot.